Once more, good afternoon. Uh, I will try to um, say something about public dialogue as such and, and give uh, some impulses that I hope you can use uh, in your further reflection in your specific context. Because uh, when I think about public theology, uh, I think it's one of the greatest adventures for a theologian. Uh, why? Because uh, when you try to cope with that, uh, that topic, uh, you need to go far beyond your field of research, uh, your way of thinking, and you need to go into a dialogue uh, with people uh, who are concerned in, with public issues. Without that, the public uh, theology makes no sense. It's just an abstract. And uh, because of that, I've decided today uh, to talk about uh, a document of the Federal World Federation about public space and church in public space uh, to offer you some thoughts about uh, tools or about uh, theological insights which can be helpful in your work as a media officer, press officers, and so on and so on in this very important and big world of new media, social media, and so on. But I would like to start with, with this photo. Uh, this photo is quite a, quite a symbolic thing. Uh, it's a, a photo from, from Lima. It was this uh, Karma Summit, there COP20. Uh, this group of, this bunch of people are uh, young representatives of, of LWF. Uh, which were there to advocate for climate justice. And that is a moment in which uh, they pass this green candle to a representatives of a board of UN who organize this, this meeting there uh, in Lima. And that is, I think, a good example of how something small, very common practice, uh, which is quite common for Christians. We usually use candles somehow, somewhere uh, in, in our practice. Uh, to use it not only as a sign for something which we used to do it in the services or so, but also to use it as a symbol in a public space. To say something through such very simple thing. Another simple thing which is here is this guy uh, in the front uh, with this t-shirt, Fast for Climate. It's just the same story. Uh, it was a campaign uh, organized by, by, by churches uh, under LWF uh, in which uh, several people declared to fast. It is also common Christian practice, but this fastening has a special context, exactly climate. And, uh, through this, uh, this practice, they try to engage people and to make them more aware about this very important public issue, uh, which climate change and all the challenges connected with it uh, are. And we will go back soon to, to, to this kind of question. What, which simple means we can use in public space. But before of that, that's, that was of course the, the uh, cover photo of the, of the document. And I would like to uh, give you some, some insights uh, which, which are there. Uh, in the end of the presentation will be also a uh, web address in which you can get it also for yourself. And when you need it, you can, you can use it. Uh, First of all, uh, the idea to take care of our public space, and to discuss our public space, uh, especially in context of uh, Reformation Jubilee, 500 years, was uh, that the ground for it uh, was that we need to be active. And we can see that in our world, uh, one more is in times in which religion has a meaning. Not always positive, not always clear, but it has its meaning. And we need to uh, recognize it. We need to uh, critically look at it and 
try to uh, show what uh, religion or religious actors in the society uh, can give to us. What is the possible input of religious actors in uh, public discourse? Uh, as a group which was uh, responsible for preparing this document, we thought about uh, five discourses in which uh, religion get intentions today. Uh, first of it is how religion copes with politics and how politics cope with religion. Uh, who use who and uh, in which ways. Just another, just the same story with economics. How churches, religious actors, how Christians uh, play a role in economical life. How they shape this economical life. How, what can they give into this part of society. Another uh, discourse is the culture. And I think it's the newest to Europe point of interest because uh, the first thing is, is about which we thought in context of, of the religion and culture was the media. How the churches use the media. How the media use the churches. How they uh, use religion, how they develop this their religion thinking and how they try to communicate their uh, religious insight. And fourth, discourse religion and science. Uh, how faith in science, faith in knowledge uh, can be put together with knowledge about faith, namely theology. Uh, how those two can cooperate to develop better public space, better society. What we as theologians, as, as church people, as church representatives can give into science discourse and what we can take from it to uh, be more aware of the or processes or the situation in which we are and the, the last one, and I think the most controversial one, but also one of the most popular discourses nowadays in media, uh, namely religion and violence. What can churches do against it? And in which parts religious churches, religious agencies, uh, religious organization, uh, invite people to violence because we also need to say it clearly that it's not only this positive way to cope with violence but also sometimes uh, church, churches use it and religious against it use it to have their goals to achieve their goals of course we have in our christian faith in our uh, christian way of thinking about the world also tools and instruments to show how uh, such uh, violence, such violence, where are the grounds of it? And we can reveal it, we can name it, and we can fight against it. But still, uh, first of all, we need to have a good analysis of it. And why do we need this analysis? Because uh, in some way, we are vocated to this, because God, engage with this world, and that's the, one of the most common Christian beliefs, and uh, it gives a basis also for the church to be in the public space. When God takes care also about public space, about also about everything what we thought is secular, we should also be in his manner and take also our responsibility about public spaces uh, in plural because we don't have only one public space and I think you are ones of those who are the most aware of it because in all contexts of, of social media, of, of internet, uh, we can observe that there are <coughs> such a bunch, such a variety of public spaces. Uh, 
as a part of the partner, we of course take our cultural identity in this uh, group of from public for public space. Uh, we try to find uh, something in Reformation Lutheran thinking which can give an input uh, to develop uh, church activity in a public space. Uh, the first association we have is that also in the 16th century, Martin Luther and his co-workers uh, take responsibility not only for the church, but also for the society. A uh, good example for this uh, was uh, the situation with charity. Uh, because of theological changes in 16th century, uh, Reformation uh, take away the rationale for the charity. Because for the charity uh, was responsible, especially brotherhoods, which was connected to masses. The Reformation changed the meaning of the mass, changed the church service, but the reformers were aware we need to put something in that place. Because as a church, we need to be responsible for the vulnerable, for those who are poor. And because of that, they developed in Wittenberg a uh, so-called system of common chest, uh, from which they financed uh, the, the charity work. And the second thing, which is also quite obvious, is education. The, one of the main issues in, in uh, Reformation was developing education. Not only uh, for church purposes, it was illustrated. We need good pastors, we need educated pastors uh, to serve in the church. But beside that, in all Luther writings connected to education, it is clear that we also need educated people to serve in secular society, to serve for the same. We need also better public space, better space, and because of that, we need education. And in public theology discourse, uh, the first step uh, will be to try to say what is the situation. And I uh, would like now to share uh, some thoughts about what or how public space should look. Another question, how look like the reality that we uh, are in? The first thing uh, and the main element of, of, of our thinking about public space is um, saying that it should be a just place for all. That means participation, that means the possibility to speak up, uh, that means that everybody will be heard that everybody will uh, have their chances uh, to say what they need, to uh, advocate their needs, and to discuss and finding solutions for everybody. That means that we need a participatory system <laughs> of uh, discussion. We need safety, because it is not always safe to speak up in public space what I need, especially in situations minority uh, and when we are in some how some kind different from the other actors in society uh, next uh, next thing uh, all this participation it's not only technical process it should be meaningful that means that all the actors in this process should critically look inside of of them and uh, think what is my input, how I should shape this input uh, to put it, to push it a little farther, not to stay stuck in one point, but to develop the discussion. Of course, when we look around, we see uh, that all those principles about participation, about safety, it's not something that we have always and everywhere. And that's the, the first problem, that the reality need to be changed in that manner, but it means that we need some very specific tools and a very specific way of thinking to do it. Because 
and that's the <laughs> another thing in, in public theology. Uh, for me, it's mainly the critical way of thinking about our reality and trying to cope and to link our theological ideas with this reality to uh, achieve certain goals which are not only religious, which basically aren't religions at all. Because we talk about common good and we try to put our religious input into this common good. Because it is also true that the religion is a great power. Religion has a power to transform our lives. And uh, we can use it also as a basis for changes in society. But to do it, we need some critical elements, uh, theological way of thinking uh, to make it meaningful for everybody. And now I would like to focus on some of those which are quite common for Lutheran tradition, but I think they can be also useful uh, for the others. Uh, the first thing uh, is the baptismal vocation. Uh, baptism is the start of, of uh, way of being Christian, and uh, this vocation put us in the community. Uh, we are a part of Christian community and we are equal in it. And that's very important principle, this equality. Uh, this equality put us in the sphere of God wants with us. Uh, Lutheran theology talks about justification by faith. And that's how God saved us through Jesus Christ. And that's a gift for everybody without any precondition. We get it free. But that means that we should pass this gift for others. And that makes a very well-known statement from, from Luther Walks, Freedom of a Christian. Uh, I would like to quote it. A Christian is a lord of all, completely free of everything. A Christian is a servant, completely attentive to the needs of all. This first sentence talked about us before God. For Luther. That means that we are free. We don't need to do anything to be saved. We just get it. But that means also our responsibility for our neighbors. Responsibility of love and responsibility of care, of their needs. Because in Luther's theology, from my point of view, it's always very special dynamics. God gives something to us as humans, but we should pass it to the others. Without that, it won't work correctly. That's the, I think, one of the most important part from Reformation message, uh, which shaped Protestant branch of Christianity. Uh, another thing, quite important and quite useful, but also quite controversial, uh, are some distinctions which were made in reforma Reformation theology. And those, uh, those distinctions uh, are about, first, state and the church, and how we use law in our practice. Uh, the first distinction uh, is well known as a doctrine of, of two kingdoms or two regiments. And I think this second term is better uh, because it shows us that regime is something in which God and God engaged uh, himself with the world. Uh, that's the way in which God take care about the world in secular or in spiritual manner. It was clear cut in Lutheran theology between those two. Why? To 
say very clearly that the secular matters are something different from the spiritual. That means that we shouldn't preach uh, gospel with the means of secular power. That was the basic <laughs> insight of, of Luther. Uh, to say that we shouldn't use all the secular means to convince somebody to faith. Yeah? There is no, that's not the case of power. That's not the case of power. It's the case of Holy Spirit and His work in the Gospel. And the aim and task and goal of the church is to preach. And that's all what we should do in this sphere. And the second regime is the this secular one. And in secular one, we use another means. In spiritual, we cope with people by law. Sometimes in secular, we need to use power. We need to use even violence. Uh, why? Because we are all sinful. And sin destroys the world. And sometimes we should act against it also with means of justice and violence. Of course, in Lutheran theology, they are clearly stated that there are official actors to do it. It's the task of state, not everybody, to uh, be in this vocation of uh, taking care of justice and peace. But it is also clear that we need peace and justice in our society to develop also our religious because we need proper context for our work. And uh, today, of course, this uh, distinction has a quite long story. And it, this story is quite complicated, because sometimes Lutherans use it uh, just to excuse themselves from being active when they need to do it. Of course, it can be used that way, but this is a misuse. Uh, the idea to put it in discourse today in a meaningful way is to take from this distinction uh, this clear insight that we shouldn't mess up religion and politics. There are two different ways of uh, taking care about the world. Of course, uh, church, but also a task to give input in public discussion. Of course, on the basis of this distinction, we can also clearly say that we have a state at the church, with the people of the church, to discuss with others, not <coughs> on the ground of faith, but on the ground of common good. And because of that, for example, we can see how in evangelical theology in past at least 50 years, a uh, quite important place uh, have a discourse about human rights as a language that we can use uh, to cooperate with actors from other contexts. Of course, when we link uh, thinking in terms of human rights, and we have our faith basis force to develop this, this discourse, we don't need to resignate from our identity as people of faith. But we don't need to also make others to be people of faith to cooperate with them. And that's something really important in our today plural society that we are also open to cooperation over the boundaries of religion and over the borders in which also religious way of thinking sometimes gives to the society. And uh, that's something which I think we can use also today uh, for our public engagement. And 
another thing, is the second distinction about the law. In Luther's theology, he uh, distinct two ways of using the law. Uh, first of it is so-called theological, and that's the way in which we diagnose who we are as a sinner. It's the tool and instrument to call the sin, sin, and to have a proper diagnosis which we need to be saved. But besides of that, the law has also another uh, very important uh, aspect, and this aspect is political use of the law. That means that it gives structure for our function in the world, it gives us uh, some rationale or some procedure in which we can cope with each other uh, with special or specific questions uh, or challenges bef uh, before which we stand. Uh, it also gives us opportunity uh, to take part in decision making. So we are aware that we need such a procedure, such a structure. We are better aware of the way how the society decided about the important questions for them, and we can really meaningful way take part in this decision making process. Without knowing that, it is really hard to do it really meaningful. And now I go to the quite practical part of this document and what I would like to say. aspects of our practical engagement. Uh, we uh, develop on the basis of analysis how the Lutheran World Federation was active in special, crucial for, uh, for this organization issue in public space. For example, refugees, uh, not only this last refugee crisis, but it was kind of a basis of, of, of being together in the Lutheran World Federation because one of the issues uh, which made this organization happened uh, was refugee crisis happened after the Second World War. Uh, another thing is a cl climate justice. Uh, another question, gender justice. Uh, what else have we, uh, have, have we here? Uh, overcoming exclusion, that's, that's especially the story, the story about apartheid in the South Africa. Uh, in which Lutheran World Federation give a clear voice against it. And on this basis, uh, we thought, how did it work that some of those initiatives were quite successful? And uh, we thought about Sadashima, uh, that uh, has three important aspects which are interlinked with each other. The first is the most visible one, the practices. And that's what I show on the, on the photo uh, on, on start. We have as Christians quite a lot, very simple, very common uh, elements of our life, which we can use in our active, uh, activity in public space. For example, praying, <coughs> singing, Bible reading, diaconal action, all of that can have a public context. Because we can, when we are praying, when we are uh, thinking about our interpretation of the Bible, uh, we can do it with questions that raise from the public discourse. And we can use it, all those practices, in somehow to solve those questions. And what, what else? The practices are also something that make people in the church active. Because uh, one of the most important things in being active in public is to make it an issue not only for the head of the churches, 
or for the, only for the passport officials. But uh, to raise awareness of those public questions or the public advocacy which uh, church conduct uh, also uh, for the parishioners, for the people who are in the church. And that's quite good, uh, I think, way to do it. Of course, it's always a question of context in which we do it. How we can, what we can use to uh, activate people. But it can be something really simple. Of course, we can say that this handle on the photo uh, on start was nothing, uh, because there were politicians, there were uh, negotiators and so on, and they don't care. But it was also for them, because this uh, UN uh, lady who was there uh, tweeted after the, the Lima uh, summit that this candle was on the podium and gave us the sense of the light during this deliberation. Maybe it's only a small sign, but it, is, it can be a meaningful sign. And because of that, all those really simple practices are important. But we have also two other dimensions which are uh, not so visible, not so uh, clear for everybody. The first of them are ideas. They are all cultural, religious, spiritual convictions, narrative, values, all this content which we have in Christianity and which we can use to be uh, something helpful in public space. Uh, I gave this example of adoption of two, two kingdoms or, or two, two regiments, two realms. Uh, this doctrine, of course, is a theological idea, clearly. It was based on, on theological thinking, but uh, in Reformation time, and also today, it is used in uh, also in secular context, or in context of relation between church and politics. It's not only theological. And we have, I think, really much more such examples in our theological thinking, in our being a Christian. Compassion, justice, respect for diversity, and so on and so on. Uh, we should be aware that we need them because our activism needs a certain rationale for it. And this certain rationale is given from inside uh, by those ideas. But we also need structures. We live in a very concrete uh, situation. This situation has its legal, political, and civil dimension. We have law, we have institutions, we have organized our society in a certain way. And we should be aware of it. And we should find a way to use it to achieve our goals in public space. We should have uh, or be aware of a clear agenda. What are our goals, what we would like to achieve, but then we need to use it, all of those to do it. Uh, without structure, <coughs> this meaningful participation won't be there. And those three are important. We can't just focus on practices. We need ideas, we need structures. We can't focus only on structures. Without ideas, we don't have rationale, we don't have basis to name our goals. When we don't have practices in our picture, then we don't have this engagement on this grassroots level, which is also very important for this church engagement in public space. And to end here, I would like uh, to ask you three questions. On this uh, practical level, because uh, I think that the most important thing in public theology is dialogue, and I will be really grateful to hear from you uh, what are your insights about those three questions. You work in quite specific public spaces. 
which are in the media, which are uh, in the internet, all this stuff. And first question is a diagnostic one. What dangers and possibilities are provided by the fact that public spice moves nowadays to the virtual reality? Uh, and the second and third questions are uh, connected with this schema about practices and structures and ideas. Uh, what practices and structures specific for the virtual reality can be used by the churches to shape the public space? What means do we have because all those important discourse is there in social media, in internet, in all those, those stuff? And what theological ideas, do you have any uh, of them, can be relevant to shaping public space by means typical for virtual reality, for the internet way of thinking. They will, I think, they will change us much by, by, by this change, but this great change that we have virtual reality in our society. And I think that we can script in groups, that's quite nice that we are in the table, and that means that we have three, four people in the group, and I think a quarter for, for discussion and then short uh, summary from every from those. Everyone.